A huge issue that's going on right now is um, racial injustice. Mm. There's protests, marches. So the question here, do Christians support the protest around racial injustice? Because many Christian figures seem to have spoken out against it. What is the Christian stance on racism? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a few things in there. Uh, the racism question is um, pretty straightforward biblically. Uh, God creates humankind in his image. He creates them all shapes, sizes, colors, everything uh, to reflect his glory into the world. And the oppression, suppression, prejudice of any person made in the image of God violates the Bible. It's also a gospel issue because uh, when you read the pictures of heaven, there's these beautiful images of the whole, uh, all the people, all tribe, tongue, nations gathered before the lamb, singing, you know, all of that uh, before Jesus, Revelation 7, this kind of great. And I remember I was actually, um, before I moved to Vancouver, I was the pastor, junior high pastor, believe it or not, I did junior high ministry, you know, the all-nighters and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, which mm -hmm. that's why I got out of that ministry, because <laughs> I understand. Uh, but uh, uh, in Toronto, super multicultural, I think there was like a hundred and 10 different nations represented or something in the church, in the one church. So full of flags and full of just, and uh, it was beautiful. It's like that picture of heaven where every single nation is represented and you're, you're literally doing life together. You're doing worship. And in those moments, you know, the gospel, and, and actually what we, what we fail to understand is when people want to say, oh, the church shouldn't talk about racism. Like my friends down in the States were talking about this recently. They can preach on adultery. They can preach on greed. They can preach on all these sins. No one gets, you know, they don't get an email. They get up and say, racism's wrong. And they go, why are you being political? It's like, this is the furthest thing from political. This is a Bible issue. This is literally, God makes people in his image, not to suppress, not to oppress. Um, and when you read the New Testament, it's oftentimes written to a group of people. Like when you read Romans, when you read, uh, when you read Ephesians, when you read Galatians, these books are actually dealing with, as a secondary under gospel issue, a racism issue. Because the issue in the New Testament is there are Jews, and there are Gentiles. They've become, you know, Christians, but they don't want to do community together. And so the gospel, the New Testament, half of it is written to almost address racism and go, Jew and Gentile are equal in Christ. You're coming together. You're one community. And Paul calls out Peter in Galatians 2 because Peter was hanging out with all the Gentiles. And then the Jews arrived from Jerusalem, gave him a little pressure, and he left. He broke table fellowship with the Gentiles. And they're like, yeah, you, you actually, that, you don't understand the gospel because the gospel is going to cause you to have table with anybody that believes in Jesus. Anyway, so all that's to know with the protests and stuff. Christianity actually has a history of um, going against the powers when they're oppressive. So go back and read William Wilberforce, how he's fighting in the, the, the House of Commons for the abolition of slavery. Christianity is what drives the, ab the abolition of slavery. And so at times you need to protest a thing. You need to, you know, have civil disobedience. At times Christians, certainly when they move Bibles into countries, even till today, a country will say, do you have Bibles? You have a truck of them. You're like, nope. All right, because you're trying to actually bring the gospel to something that may be illegal or bring attention to something. So protests within Christian history are fine. Of course, the way you protest is obviously an issue uh, and you want to make sure that you do that. I mean, when you look at Jesus, here's the guy who literally dies for his enemies, who absorbs evil. He doesn't do evil to other people. That's pretty well a New Testament ethic all the way through. And so making sure you're honoring those in power, like police and all of those things, when they're actually not abusing their power. And so they're amazing people who risk their lives for us every day and got into this job in order to fight for justice and fight against oppressors. And, and then we kind of all with one broad brush, we say, oh, they're oppressive. On the other hand, we got to make sure that people aren't, whether they're politicians or pastors or whatever role, actually doing that. And sometimes the way to do that is to stand up and go, hey, can I have your attention? We haven't really been heard. We've been living life in a certain way and we need to get everyone's attention and go, hey, we're actually going to march against this thing. So the Christian ethic would be to do that, but to do it in a way that is, you know, uh, a shrewd as serpents, as Jesus says, and 
as innocent as doves, holding those two things together to make your statement. So talk to us a bit, like if the Christian response is that we are supposed to be all one people, why are there often so many churches that are like, this is a, a Chinese church, this is a black church, this is a Hispanic yeah. church? What, what's your? I what's think your where that comes from, so yeah, I think Galatians 2 challenges that and doesn't want us to become homogeneous churches. I think why that happens is because very naturally, I was I was doing a uh, an interview uh, with my buddy the other day, um, who is a minority in Canada. We were talking about his experience, and he said when he first came into the church, you know, him and kind of he would listen to all hip hop music. He came into the church and it was all cold play and like you know, and it's like, is there anything from my culture that's going to be represented here at all? Me and my friends' culture, and he started to feel like there's nothing. And so, I think what happens is culturally a language thing there becomes this kind of hey we don't really do worship like that mm. i only do that on sunday why is it so different and removed from my cultural expression and so we end up going to the cultures that we exist within or that we're comfortable in and so i think that's kind of a natural pilgrimage almost and so the gospel challenges us to try to make it more eclectic the best we can mm. so yeah